Okay, so this is uh, the God of War director, game director, commentary track. Um, I'll say this to start with. I'm a little wary uh, to do commentary tracks just because I've seen some game uh, companies do them and they always seem a little pretentious and presumptuous uh, just because it's like, I don't know, we're not a movie, we're a game, and maybe this doesn't apply, but we figured we'd give it a shot and see if it works. So... Um, obviously this is the opening of the game. This is Linda Hunt doing the narration. Um, she was in Dune. She was in Silverado. She, uh, I think her voice is awesome. And I, I, I wanted her from the very beginning of this game to do the voice. Uh, cause I definitely thought, uh, you know, she really, uh, kind of gives this kind of nobility to the narration. And it really felt like a Greek myth kind of being retold. This level, uh, the Hydra level, uh, was the first level. Actually it was the last level that we designed, the very last level. And the idea behind it was that we figured, oh, okay, cool, we'll understand the technology at this point and we'll know our limitations and we'll know the strengths and weaknesses of the team and we'll have the best, we'll save sort of the best for last in terms of, uh, you know, the knowledge that we need to design levels that we'll be firing on all cylinders. And the problem ended up happening was that by the time we got done with the game and this is the last level, I was so out of ideas and so out of inspiration and. I just really wanted to be done, and I think uh, I think the level from a production standpoint is is really phenomenal. Uh, I, the whole idea was to create like the opening of an Indiana Jones movie or a James Bond movie where we thrust you right into the action, um, and I think that really worked well. But I think from a standpoint of just sort of level design, uh, it's a little too linear for me. I wish there would have been a bit more branching to the paths, and um, it's a little too simple. I, I think it works for the game because it's the first level, and it, it it's okay that it's not too complicated, but. I do regret that, uh, that we designed it so late in the game. Um, one of the things we definitely wanted to do right from the get-go is really establish Kratos as a character and sort of this sort of brutal, uh, vicious warrior. And I, I tried, and you'll see as you go through the level, a number of places where um, we're sort of, uh, be it dealing with the Hydras or be it dealing with some of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the NPCs, like the captain at the end of the level, really wanting to make sure that this guy came off as a, as a total vicious kind of jerk. Um, so right from the very beginning, you're like, okay, we're sort of staking a claim that this isn't just sort of your normal action hero. He's, he's definitely got issues. Um, originally, this opened when you were fighting the Hydra. Like, immediately, you were fighting one of the giant, you know, monster heads. And I really, uh, cinematically, I think that works great. You know, you hit start, and you're immediately into the battle. And we sort of have that here, but the problem was I actually went out and I rented a bunch of games, that, like four or five games that I had never played before, just never even picked up a controller on. And I was just like, you know, can I play these games um, right from the get-go? And if they thrust me into an action sequence, would I know what to do? And it was just, it, you know, I, it just was a nightmare. It didn't work. And if we would have put you in the middle of a battle, uh, with this really big boss right from the beginning, people would have just been getting slaughtered and frustrated. And, and it might have, been, might have been cinematic for someone watching it, but for someone playing it, uh, it would have been really bad. So we, we definitely needed to, uh, you know, give the player a little bit of training, which is what that opening shot or opening scene was on the boat. And now this is sort of what the original opening of the game was, where you were immediately fighting the Hydra from the get-go. Um, we actually originally hear, you know, as you're seeing the little training messages popping up, on the screen, originally uh, th there was this little fairy creature, you know, this little tiny lightning bug kind of creature that kind of flittered over Kratos' shoulder and, and the gods had sent him, it was like a muse or something, and it was like, you know, here's how you, you know, use your blades and here's how you do your magic. And it, we, we were intentionally looking to get a very irritating, annoying little Tinkerbell-like voice. And what was going to happen is right when he stepped out of the ship after this Hydra, uh, she would just get slaughtered, you know, she would just get absolutely killed by the uh, by the the zombies and stuff And I thought it would just be kind of a neat little uh, Twist on the typical sort of Nintendo Zelda uh, You know kind of RPG. Here's your little buddy uh, And they would travel with you throughout the whole game And you know we were going to introduce that and pretty much kill it violently within the first five minutes of gameplay And we just it, 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 it we were worried that the tone is cool as I think it still is and funny as I think it still is I didn't want people to think we were making like a parody or a satire and so we so we kind of killed it and that was that was that but I still think that's a really cool idea so it was really important uh, you know right right from the very beginning uh, of the first level that we had some kind of puzzle I mean this isn't like some kind of deep cerebral puzzle coming up but I, I, I wanted to make it clear that the game really was a mix of the combat and some expo exploration and some puzzle solving and 
Um, you know, so th this was sort of our, our first puzzle in the game that functions both as a sort of a training mode uh, where you're learning how to charge up and kick, kick items around uh, as well as sort of trying to figure out, uh, you know, that you have to sort of use that mechanic in order to get across, get the box across the deck. Uh, I, and I loved, I don't know, I don't remember where it came from, but I definitely love this idea of, um, <clears throat> you know, the uh, ability to, to sort of kick these draggable objects because this, I think that's sort of the bane of a lot of uh, adventure g action game players is sort of these draggable box puzzles. And, and you know, I, I think they serve their function. I mean, there's only so many ways you can communicate a puzzle uh, with, the, with, with the limited buttons on a controller for a console. Um, but I think it was really cool that we came up with the idea of sort of a way to drag it a lot faster. Um, and at the same time, I think it really speaks to the main character where he's, he's you know, he, he's, he's, he doesn't have the patience to kind of drag this box Tomb Raider style all over the place. He's just going to kick the damn thing. And I think that uh, that really comes through in this puzzle and, and sort of in this mechanic, which I, I love. I love that idea of, <clears throat> you know, where gameplay mechanics really aren't just fun mechanics, but they also sort of uh, end up being, uh, you know, sort of things that speak to the character themselves. So the idea of mixing mechanics and character development uh, is, is a really neat avenue of game design. And we certainly didn't do a lot of it here. It's really, really hard. Um, and we had our other priorities just making the game fun. But I think the fact that we even got a little bit of it in this uh, and, and we'll hopefully do it more in future uh, games and maybe even future God of War games, I think is, is really, really cool. So this is... Uh, the first magic door and I, I'm really really happy that uh, I think these turned out really well um, from the vo like the voice actor I love the voice actor of Poseidon um, I love the fact just sort of in the story and in the the vibe of the game that, that all of these classic Greek gods are able to show up and sort of have little you know cameos I, I think it helps ground it um, in the Greek mythology um, you, you know, that whole idea of just going to a little nether world and seeing you know Kratos get these powers and things you see that in a lot of other games, and I just went to the guys and I said, "Hey, let's let's do that," and you know, base it more in Greek mythology. And you, you kind of make these requests, and you kind of figure, well, you know, everybody else does it. Let's just do it. And God, that those things took forever. We had one guy on those god doors for months and months and months, making the effects and making the the, the lip sync, and it's just. I think it added a great deal of production value, but it man, it's 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 a pain. It's a pain to do a lot of the stuff that. It doesn't look like a pain when you play it, but it turns out to be. As you you can see now, I mean, this is this is what you know. Hopefully, when you've played the game, the the, the animation here looks a lot better. Um, this is you know these are animatics or a little bit further than animatics, just that we use to sort of test the ideas out and and get the pacing and get the shot. So it's kind of cool that you kind of get to see the the progression because I mean, you know, these movies started with little block rig characters and it progressed to this, and then finally, what's in the game and. It takes a lot of imagination to, you know, remind yourself that, you know, or to envision what it's really going to look like. Because you see this kind of stuff for, for months on end, and you're just like, oh, man, this game's never going to come together. And then one day, you know, the file comes in from the animator, and everything's done, and you're like, oh, my God, it, it feels real. It feels like a real game. So that's really, really cool. So this is the first boss battle. Um, even when we took this out on the press tour uh, a couple of weeks ago, they were like, man, do you... You know, some of the magazines and websites were like, do you think it, obviously, as you can see, this is really early. We've got the boss bars and bugs everywhere, but you, you get the idea. Um, but they were like, you know, do you, do you think it makes sense to open the first level with uh, with all of this sort of crazy fighting um, and, and bosses and stuff for the first level? And, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I, I think, I mean, the plan is to tune it in such a way that uh, beginner players are going to be able to get through it, but they're still going to get a real... Uh, sort of adrenaline rush out of it. This idea, the whole, you know, Hydra battle uh, was again designed wanting the player to get the sense that the, the game wasn't just pure hack and slash, but there was some thinking involved and there were some puzzles involved. And um, I really like this idea, this idea of, you know, these guys not letting you up the mast and, and you needing to sort of explore the environment to figure out that you're going to have to pin them down to the deck uh, with these giant anchors in order to progress. and. The idea that right off the bat, the first level of the game that we're really setting up for the player that, uh, you know, you can't just whack your way through this game. There are some sections, of course, where you can, but there's, there's, there's more to that, and uh, there's more to it than that. And uh, so I think this is a really cool boss battle, um, at least the beginning of the boss battle.